All right, welcome back to the channel, guys and girls. Today, we're gonna to be doing some maintenance on the snow dogs. I've had this snow dog seven horsepower compact, which they don't make anymore. They make a 10 and they make a 10 horsepower compact and they make a 13 and a half. They make a bunch of stuff. I'll leave the link for snow dog below. But what happened was I meant to check these bearings uh, for the bogey wheels in the middle of summer. And like, I'm sure summer, the same thing with you guys just gets away from you. So I never got a chance to check it. It's out of the one year warranty. Um, so I had to buy new bearings. So I bought Timken bearings. Let me show you like how to, I've already done one set of the bogey wheel, like the whole spring assembly is, uh, suspension. So let me show you how to take them out and pull the old bearings off and install new bearings and put the bogey wheels back together because the snow dog actually came with these uh, 6205 RS or two RS bearings, which means rubber seal and there's a rubber seal on each side. And you can't see that when they're installed, but these are right from Russia, I'm guessing. I don't speak Russian or read Russian, but there's Russian writing on the inner race in there. And they, the grease is just falling out of them. So when I went to go check the bearings this, uh, about a month ago, I realized one of them was completely locked up. And I yanked it a little bit and then it freed up. But I'm gonna use this consistently all winter long. I don't want them locking up in the ice. I don't want them blowing out. Um, and have to get like bed lifted back or, or even towed back, it would make even more damage. So we're just gonna replace them. I'll show you step by step how to do it. First things first is I'm already into this uh, one bogey wheel setup already that goes right, right over there. So I've already taken one of those out. So let me show you how to take the next one out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen this, this nut right here. And that goes to the other side here. That's your uh, basically your idler, idler back pulley. And then I'm going to release the tension on the track by loosening those. So we got to loosen that, loosen that with a nut on a nut and a wrench on both sides. And this is 17 millimeter, and this is 12 millimeter, just to save you guys some time. And then what you're going to do is you're going to spin that back, and that will loosen the tension on the track. And now mine has a nice little rust spot where it was. Uh, before I took it apart. So just make sure you either mark that or follow your manual for tack, track tension adjustment. So next step is we're gonna take, loosen this nut, and there's one on the opposing side, on the opposite side. We're gonna loosen those two up and then jack the uh, snow dog up or put it on jack stands. And then we're gonna yank that bogey assembly right out of there. Loosen up the other side. And for me, I'm just using a jack stand in the uh, D loop or like the little hook that came in the front there. And I'm just gonna set it on top of there. And since mine's only the seven horsepower, mine's like extremely light. And now that assembly is loose, we can just lift the snow dog up more and then yank it right out of there. I'm gonna put this up to like my lapel mic. Hear that? That's not a good bearing noise. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. You're better off just replacing all of them. Unfortunately, it's better to have your dealer do it, of course. But uh, let's, uh, let's start taking this apart. All right, first things first is we're gonna remove these like bogey caps, basically. And it's just a bunch of uh, 10 millimeter bolts and nuts on the other side and with nylocks. We're gonna remove them all, get them all off to the side and take the bogey wheels off the bearings. Like I said, 10 millimeter. I'm not gonna make you watch all of this. So there's one that comes off. And then you just peel the bogey wheel off the bearing. And then that little assembly goes to the side. We're gonna use that again later and all that is still good. And there's the bearing on there and there's actually a snap ring on the end of it. So there's the bearing on there and there's a snap ring. Now you will need a some skill and some safety glasses in order to get that snap ring off or um, a special tool which is called a snap ring plier and I'll show you that in a second. So you are going to need some specialty tools to even remove this bearing because they are on there pretty good. And the uh, bogey wheels do have these little plastic inserts in them and they do fall out. They're like little, here I'll press one out for you. The little plastic bushings that go into the rubber bogey wheel. So pop those out. Well, actually leave them in there. If they pop out, just push them back in. They're not a high tolerance or anything like that. Next tool we're going to use is called a uh, 
snap ring plier. And basically when you squeeze it, it opens and you can actually change the position on this one. I'll leave uh, the link for this tool below. I don't know where I got it, but I'll leave one from Amazon below. Pair of needle nose and sometimes a flat of screwdriver. We're gonna get that little, that little snap ring off there, which is a little bit difficulty. It's a little bit difficult, but I'll see if I can, uh, see if I can show you guys how I do it. It is spring steel, so it's, that's why I'm wearing safety glasses. They do come off at high speed sometimes. Sometimes they come off really easy, sometimes they don't. And all we're trying to do is get that started on there. Get it started coming off and then the rest of it we can get with a pair of pliers. And that's it. And then we just gotta make sure it doesn't go falling like mine just did. Luckily I saw it. Like I said, safety first. So I got safety glasses on. The next tool we're gonna use is called a bearing separator and polar set. So this is from Pittsburgh um, machine. You can also rent them, I think at like Napa and AutoZone and wherever else you can rent tools from, like auto part tools. Uh, this is from Harbor Freight. I'll find the Amazon equivalent to it. Uh, I've already done one set, so it works really well. Let me show you how to use that real quick. So it's definitely a specialty tool. So what happens is that, uh, that bearing is basically pressed on there and it's really tight on there and it's kind of rusted on there at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get behind it and use the end of the shaft and pull the uh, the bearing off. And I'll show you the setup of it. Loosen it up all the way. And then we kind of clamp it on there. As symmetrical as we can. And we wanna make sure it's tight and as symmetrical as possible. And then what we do is we put the, uh, the lifting assembly on there. And your kit should come with all of this stuff, obviously, nuts and bolts, and uh, mine came with a couple different sizes, two different sized cups. I used the larger cup, seems to work a little bit better. And we wanna make sure that's centered in the hole there. So what we want is to press against the end of that shaft right there. So what we want to do is get the biggest socket that we have that snugly fits through there that will clear the shaft. If pressed in. So right now mine is a, a Stanley 11 sixteenths for right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that socket with the base down. And I have this little block of aluminum here that has a little dent in it from doing this already. Um, if you have a press at home, like a hydraulic press, I would suggest using that instead of doing this. What we're doing is we're yanking, we're pressing on the, basically pressing the shaft out and pulling the bearing off at the same time. So um, socket, that's the same size as the inner race, piece of aluminum to basically not press that through there. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten that with a, with a ratchet and this bearing will come right off. And so we're going to get it started here. So there's one of the bearings, just yanked it right off there with that tool. In the socket and as you can see, I don't know if you can focus enough, I'll stay still. All the grease is gone from inside that bearing. It's just all blown out. So seals are definitely leaking. That's not good, not good for anybody. So there's one and then we're gonna pop it around and do the other side. And there's probably plenty of videos on YouTube on how to use a, a bearing separator, bearing puller. So that tool made it a lot easier. I was trying to like pry it off, hammer it off, all that kind of stuff. Gotta use the right tool. Uh, I think the tool is like 75 bucks. I think you can buy probably ones way more expensive and way cheaper 
on Amazon and you know off Amazon, but you can also rent them for a couple days if you need to. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is these uh, end of these shafts are are pretty gross. They're pretty rough machines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some 400 grit sandpaper, wet dry sandpaper, and I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit. I'm not taking off really any material. Clean them up and I'm gonna take a wire brush and I'm gonna clean off the snap ring groove. Make life a little easier and then we're gonna install the new bearings. So now that we've done all that, let's, uh, let's put everything back together. So we don't wanna to forget to put the cups on. So let's start with one. Get some tools off the table here. So the bearings that we're installing, I ordered from Timken. So they are Timken bearings. They're a well-known brand. They are the 625-2RS. I'll leave the link for where I found these below. There's lots of other cheaper bearings on Amazon. I don't know how well they do. I don't know how long they'll last. These are like 13 bucks a piece and I need eight of them. So I spent a hundred bucks. Um, plus I had to pay about $20 for shipping because these came from the UK for some reason. We're gonna unpack a new bearing. Throw the trash on the floor. And here's the new bearing. What we wanna do is just lightly put it on there as square as we can. And we wanna lubricate the shaft just a little bit. This is just a little bit of three in one oil. That will just help if I ever need to take this off again, we'll help that not be as rusty. To install these bearings, they need to be perfectly square and they need to be pressed all the way up against the shoulder over here, right on the end. And what you don't wanna do is hammer them on. You don't wanna press on the outside of the, the race or anything like that. So what I've done is I took a 516 threaded rod that's uh, at about two feet long. It doesn't have to be this long. I just made it this long just because like, that's what I had. Uh, a nut for each end, a block of aluminum again, just because that's what I had. Two sockets that fit through the inner tubing so in my case, I'm using two 14 millimeters and then a socket that fits on the outside of the shaft just barely. So this is the 12 point socket. It's a size, it's a 24 socket and then I have a washer and then another nut. So let me show you the assembly. Real quick and I do, I do this in stages. Basically, let's get the bearing started and then I take it apart and then I press it on with a, a different part. So, and then I have another piece of aluminum that I have on there too. So let's walk you through the whole, whole process. So washer stays on there. Bearing always gets just like relatively put on there by hand as square as, as square as you can. There's no direction to them. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to put that piece on there and that's gonna tell us if the bearing's crooked or not by wobbling like that. Does that make sense? Put a socket in the end there and that's gonna keep the, uh, that's gonna keep the shaft from wiggling up and down just a little bit. And then one on the other end, if you guys can see that. And then this is just to prevent any marring on the end of the shaft. So if I put steel on there, it would mar the end of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this up. Tighten this up by hand. Get that bearing started on there, nice and square. And we're just gonna get that started. Ratchet to get that started on there. And what we're doing is we're just pulling these two things together here by not hurting anything. So if you do have a, a little ball peen hammer just to square these things up, that'd be helpful as well. But most of the time they've been going on perfectly straight for me. So this one's going on nice and easy. And then what we're gonna do once it's on square, we take the shaft apart again and so what we're going to do is we're going to, even though this is a spring, we're going to squeeze that until it stops. And that lets us know that it's on there square. Let's 
take it apart. And this is the best way that I found to do it without without a press. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a socket, like I said, that fits over the shaft perfectly to press on that inner race to squeeze it on all the way up to the uh, the back flange there. As you can see, I've done this quite a few times. Eight to be exact. I do. I probably could squeeze two of them on there once. It's just too much stuff to go wrong. You don't want to bugger up one of the new bearings you just bought. So now that that's on there. You want to squeeze on just the inner race. All right, all the way up there. That one's done. There we go, just past the uh, split ring. And you can pull that back right there and check inside. So just needs to be all the way up against the flange. So you can get that split ring on. Then what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap another bearing. Flip it over to the other side. And whatever you do, don't forget to put these little things on. Otherwise you gotta pull the bearing back off again. Now we're going to take them same split ring pliers. And we're going to put that split ring back on. in a similar fashion. So we're gonna use the same tool and put those split rings back on. Now this is a giant pain in the butt, but, and especially to show you guys on camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on one end and I'm gonna lean into the plier so they don't stab anything else. There we go. It's almost all the way on and you can just uh, touch it with the pliers or screwdriver and make sure that it's on there nice and tight. So we got one more to put on. Next step is to put the tire or the bogey wheel back on and you can just kind of center that. And if you didn't notice, the back of these have teeth and the back of these kind of have teeth. So make sure you line those up. And you can line the holes up. And nuts go on the bolt, nuts go on the inside. And you don't want to over tighten these too much. So I'm going to get them all finger tight here so they at least uh, don't come off. And then I'll go back with power tools and put them back on. I have to do that seven more times. Uh, the other one's already done. I'm going to finish all that, jack the snow dog back up put the front bogey set underneath there, the back bogey set underneath there, put those bolts in with a little bit of Loctite on each one, Loctite red, which I think is the removable one, whatever the removable one is. Put that on each one of those four bolts, retighten the track, um, probably one more notch compared to last year because the track was originally set by the factory, so it's probably loosened up. And then the snow dog will be ready to rip uh, for the winter. I'm super excited. Thank you guys very much for watching. Like I said, I'll leave all the links for all of the materials that I use below um, as much as I can. Um, make sure you leave comments. This is just for like snow dog owners, of course, but it's uh, something that I had to figure out myself and I wasn't willing to pay someone to do it and didn't have the time because they would have been backlogged until who knows when because everybody's super busy and uh, this time of year. So thanks again for watching.